with the release of MCC Island comes the release of To Get to the Other Side. Yeah, that's what to get to a toss. To, uh, that's what it stands for, to get to the other side. Basically, your goal with this minigame is to get to the other side of the map by all means possible and punch a chicken to try and win. This is a game mode that uses your core mechanics of parkour, block placement, and movement. And whoever's the best at that in the game, well wins really now the thing with to get to the other side is you're either good or you're not if you're good you get a lot of wins if you're not you, you need to get better otherwise you, there's no chance you're winning i'm so sorry so i'd like to think of myself as a pretty good sensei with my you know 86 percent win rate and what do you mean i don't have an 86 percent Oh, it's 86% of you guys that aren't subscribed. So if any of you guys want to press the subscribe button, feel free. It's free at the end of the day, and you can always unsubscribe, and I'd greatly appreciate it. Anyway, let's get into the video. This is how you win in To Get To The Other Side. Before I get into my tips on the minigame, we're going to go over the basics. Like I said, you need to be good at parkour, you need to be good at block placement and movement. Now luckily for you guys, there's a server that can make this a lot easier to learn and get better at. The IP is bedwarspractice.club, which obviously is a Bedwars practice server, but it works for this too. Over here, they have bridging ones where you can do straight bridging, you can do diagonal bridging, you can do upper bridging, which in a lot of the game modes are something you're going to really need to perfect. And over here in the multiplayer options, you have something called obstacle race, which basically combines all of the obstacles that you could come across and to get to the other side in one mini game in a 1v1 race. It's one really fun and two really, really helps you get better. When I was trying to get better at this for Bed Wars, this helped me significantly and it'll help you a lot with to get to the other side. If you don't already, you basically want to learn to speed bridge. There's a lot of YouTube videos aside from mine that you can just go watch. But hey, don't watch it till this video is done. You better stay here. Yeah, you're trapped here. Now let's talk about the one unwritten rule of to get to the other side. Never punch anyone. Unless they're trying to punch you off, but then maybe you can. But like, at all costs, try and avoid punching people. If you punch someone, they'll try and punch you back. If people see you punching people, they'll try and punch you because they see that you're a puncher. Don't grief people. Just play it normally, please. For the love of everything, just play normal. Play Next set of tips is modifiers. As if this game mode wasn't already hell, they have these modifiers, which every round you have a chance of getting one. They're basically a bunch of scenarios that make your game harder or sometimes easier. And you should be fine as long as you know what you're doing with each of them. So this is what you do for each of them. Red light, green light. Yeah, it's the thing from Squid Game. When the bar at the top is green, go. When it's red, stop. Now the server has a little bit of leeway for laggy people. So when it turns red, you have about half a second of movement, just in case you need to land a jump or something. So yeah, when it turns red, stop and throw out all of your morals turn around and punch everyone that you can. Because if you punch someone, they explode and go back to the start. Most likely, if you don't punch someone, they will punch you and you'll go back to the start. So at that point, I just throw out all of my morals and I punch people. Speaking about punching people a bunch, next modifier is hot potato. The server has a theme of exploding people that it doesn't like. And hot potato is much less of a hot potato, more of a child-friendly bomb. The hot potato has a countdown. And when that runs out, whoever has the potato explodes. So if you're in a big group of people, just spam punch just so you can pass the potato on as fast as you humanly can. Although if you don't have the potato and you're not near anyone, there's no point punching people. Stick to your ways of being a good person. Next modifier is one life. If you die in the event, you die in real life. No, I'm joking. You, you, you don't get a respawn. And unlike how to get to the other side's meant to be played, take this one slow. From my experience, about two thirds of the lobby end up dying in one life. So if you hold back a little bit at the start, don't let people instantly punch you off and just make sure that you finish, you'll most likely get a decent position. Early birds. In other words, the easiest way to get first, if you're lucky. Some of the chickens are outside of the finish and you can punch them to get an early finish. Obviously, this is very, very competitive, so be careful. Look for an early bird that you want to set your goals on getting to that one. Ideally, if it's more hidden, and just go straight for it. You should also spot a second one just in case someone does get it before you. You know where you're going. There are eight of these on early bird rounds, so you know you will be at least eighth place. TNT time. Sounds brutal, right? Not, not really. TNT falls from the sky and destroys the map. So just keep going as normal. You'll probably be fine, especially if you can place blocks. The only situation where this is bad is if you're on a map where you don't have blocks and maybe you fall in the void two or three times. So just try and finish as fast as possible like any other normal round. Next up is a Bed Wars player's nightmare, the slapstick. It's a knockback stick that does a lot of knockback. So don't even have it out. If people see you have it out, they're going to be intimidated by you and think that you're going to hit them and they'll hit you. So don't hit anyone. And most of the time, no one will hit you unless someone hit you. Then be merciless. Crack shot. Exactly the same. It's just a knockback bow. In my eyes, the worst one, double time. You have double the speed and half of the time. You think this sounds fine, but it's not. It's hell. A lot of the jumps aren't possible or harder to make. So you want to make sure to shift as much as possible so you don't run off an edge or miss a jump. 
your shift will be normal speed, so. And the last modifier is low gravity. It says what it does on the tin, but because it's low gravity, you have slow falling too. So just go on as normal, but with the mindset that you can now jump up two blocks at a time. And towards the end, avoid being high, because that slow falling is really slow when you see the chickens on the site. And that's all the modifiers. Pretty easy, right? Now that brings us to the map. Now, depending on the map, sometimes it's luck, sometimes it's just knowing what you're doing. Some is pure building skill. Some is hoping you don't get punched. And most of them are just about knowing the right route, to be honest. So here's how to approach each map. First map is walls. Now walls, you have two different routes and it kind of depends how confident you are. Feel free to give both a try. The first fast route is a bit easier than the second one, but also a lot more busy because of that. You want to run, jump along these cobwebs and be placing, build up, jump down to the next section cobwebs, do the same, build up. And this time you don't want to jump down. You want to bridge up like two or three blocks and then just speed bridge right to the end. If you're a bit more sweaty and a bit more confident when you're bridging, you want to staircase bridge up, speed bridge out to the top of the wall, Staircase bridge up, speed bridge to the top of the wall. And then the same two or three block staircase and speed bridge to the finish. I think Fruit Berries invented this one. I'm not sure. Next is Badlands. And this one's pretty much initiative. You can see which will be the fastest route. You want to be doing a bunch of block placing as you're running so you don't have to stop at a wall and then jump up. And a bunch of block clutches on places like this and like this. Get to the end beam. Try and get to a height where you can place a block on it and jump and aim for one of the chickens. If you miss it, don't worry. Just build up. You can still get fast pretty easy. A lot of people miss these. Beehive. You want to be sprint jumping, bounce off one slime, bounce to the next and get in the hole. Then you want to be following this path. Also, if you get punched into one of the honeycombs, make sure to be standing on one of the honeycomb blocks before jumping out. Because if you're standing on a honey, it will stick you and it won't let you jump up. Feel free to try F5 with this map as it can make your vision a little bit better if there's a lot of people close to you. Siege. Now, I don't know if there's other routes that are just as fast, but this feels as fast as it gets and this is the route I take every time. Jump across these lily pads, go up the ladders, up the middle cobblestone, avoid all pressure plates. It doesn't matter left or right, whatever feels fastest. Up the stairs and then jump across the platforms. Now the start a section with the lily pads. If it's either low gravity or double time, you can pretty much skip this section. Double time sprint straight across, low gravity jump straight across. Also with low gravity, you can jump up the cobblestones that are too high to get up the cobblestone section a bit faster. And when you get to the platforms, jump on top of one of the target blocks and then jump on the roof and run along. It will get you there way faster. Treetop. Now there's one route and you're going to have to hope you don't get punched off because this route is very busy because it is the fastest. The starter section, you can just run down. It's easier than jumping and then follow this route. Even if you get punched off, just go back to this route. It will always be the fastest. And it's quite easy as well. Cliff is easily the most luck-based one. At the start, make sure to sprint jump just in case someone punches you. You can get hit ahead of the crowd. Stop jumping when you start getting to the gaps. So if you get punched, you stand more chance of actually making it to the other platform. This is where it gets all luck-based. The rest is common sense. Run across the platforms, go up the ladders, and then jump over the beams and boom, you're there. You can get a bit of an edge on this if you have double time. Rather than sprint jumping at the start, just sprint. When you have speed, you go faster just running rather than sprint jumping. Most people naturally sprint jump, so just run straight ahead, and it should be pretty easy from there. Pits is another the bed wars player's dream just staircase block three or four blocks across the gap and then speed bridge to the next platform where you can jump off and do the same don't be too worried if it's slapstick if someone hits you from the back they'll most likely just hit you to the next platform giving you a really fast time and last but not least is factory now this is probably the most skillful one you need to be really good at block placement for this you just want to be running and jumping whilst placing blocks on the wall with your head in like this direction it's a bit hard to explain so give it a bit of trial and error and once you figure it it'll become muscle memory block clutch on the wall and then block clutch around it like you did before bridge up and jump again head round bridge up jump again and then you should be done or if you want you can block clutch on a wall and as long as it's a solid block and not glass you can mine through it just make sure to block off your paths because people will punch you off and follow you and that's everything you need to know to win and to get to the other side thank you so much for watching this video i really hope it helps a bunch if you're also struggling with sky battle i have another video which basically teaches you how to use every single item in sky battle to win games also if you want to see more mcci content i stream this daily over on my twitch channel Hagi hate me so if you want come say hi Make sure to check that subscribe button again, and I'll see you on the server.